It is the start of another day. The time when the world wakes up and the cogs of society begin to move. I am one of those cogs, going round and round. I have become a functioning part of the world, rotating in the time of day called morning. Our main character remembers in a flashback in school when she was younger, two kids fighting and she breaks it up by bludgeoning one of them over the head with a shovel. And she wonders why were the teachers mad at her for breaking up the fight? You're welcome. But that's the intrigue of this story is this main character. She has these values and thoughts that are just so outside of the norm of what an average person would think is appropriate in a situation, it's mesmerizing. It's watching an alien learning to dissect and interact in a world as if they had never worked and interacted in a society in their life. And that's what draws us into this world is Keiko Furukura and her strange behavior, but her desire to be normal. We can't help but be absolutely captivated by her. Every time she's in the room, she's the type of person that you've got one eye just kind of following her around to see what she's going to do or say next. So why do I say she wants to be normal and use air quotes to describe that? Well, it's a word that shows up 32 different times in a 116 page book. She keeps asking herself, why can't she just fit into society and understand what they want from her and what it means to be normal, what it means to be a cog. And that's what she tells us in the opening is so definitional to her thinking. When morning comes, once again, I'm a convenience store worker, a cog in society. This is the only way I can be a normal person. Because what does it mean to be normal? There's no rule book for life. Is it just what everyone else does? You do along the same lines, don't stand too far out from the crowd, and that makes you normal? And I think that's kind of why she's so drawn to being a convenience store worker, a conveni person, if you will. She gets a rule book for what she's supposed to do. When a customer walks in, this is what you say. You yell out, Yerashaimase! And anyone that's been in Japan knows that calling card of walking into a shop and hearing, Yerashaimase! I kind of miss it, not gonna lie. But what is the role of a person in society? What is the point of marriage? Are women just here to make babies? She wonders to herself, which I think is the most interesting part about this, is not the plot. This is a psychological study of someone who is struggling and almost dissecting what we do and why. And does this make sense? There's tons of comments about, oh, we're just the same individuals since the Stone Age, which is true, maybe from some biological angle and on some levels in terms of maybe what we fear and what our desires are are still there because it takes a long time for that to change biologically. But society just rapidly grows and changes to a point where is this even reflective of what we truly desire or fear in life? Is this molding around choices that we're making? And how does any of this make sense sometimes that having this outsider look can be a rather comedic and lighthearted journey and very enjoyable read to kind of look at why are we the way that we are? And does society evolve faster than it needs to for what we truly would make us happy and make us feel accepted. So Furukura started working at a convenience store at the age of 18 and has been there for 18 years, kind of perfectly dividing her life, dedicating her life to being the perfect worker, being able to hear sounds and when customers grab something off the shelves and it needs to be restocked or reorganized, she's on it. She is so attuned to how the convenience store environment works, that that's all she knows. And maybe that's part of the desire to leave that world, to continue to grow and understand society as a bigger 
as a bigger, we start to see how we create these little cultures. As a Westerner, we are just now getting to learn who Sayaka Murata is as a writer. This was her first work that was released at the time she had only 10 writings, and now her 11th writing is also released in English. If you look up the top Japanese books that you could pick out and read, this is on a lot of those lists. And topping at only 116 pages, it's very easy to pick up. It's exotic. You get the convenience store, which maybe we kind of understand from a Western standpoint. But if you spend any time in Japan, cars aren't the normal mode of transportation to go shopping at big stores. Convenience stores are a big part of the culture about being in communities and creating these local cultures of getting to know customers and getting to serve their needs. And what does that mean in the context of a greater society? Sayaka Murata apparently worked at a convenience store and wrote this book as a response to that, quoted saying, she wanted to illustrate how odd the people who believe they are ordinary or normal are. And I get that. And I think that's why this book matters. Society continues to put pressures on us every day, whether we're becoming husbands, wives, fathers, coaches of little leagues that we may or may not know all the rules to the sport that we're learning to coach. We have all these expectations of being put upon us of this is your new normal. What used to be normal for you as a single man in his 20s may not be what your normal expectations are when you're 30 or in a convenience store or at home in your own privacy. This is a book that matters to me to look at society and understand what does it mean to fit in and inclusivity of how do we look at people that maybe don't fit into those norms and what is it that they're really struggling to achieve in life. So Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata a highly acclaimed novel and easy five-star read for me to recommend to you to read. If you have interests on why do we have these strange behaviors and these strange expectations in these different pockets of society, this is a book that can speak to that. And I think will resonate with you because it's a book that I think touches on a core element of humanity, but it's also set against a backdrop of Japan, which just adds to the flavor and uniqueness that this book, I think, brings to us as readers. So, the acclaim, easily achieved, and I hope you guys consider picking it up. My name is Una. I hope you've enjoyed today's talk. If you did, we'd appreciate you hitting the subscribe button to join us on other book talks in the future. Peace out.